like to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting to order, 7 p.m. Tuesday, July 19, 2016. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next is public forum limited to five minutes per topic. Discussion or comments about town employees or agency members shall be avoided so as not to violate anyone's individual rights. Is anyone here for public forum? Next would be under the minutes. It's a Board of Selectmen minutes from July 5th, 2016. Make a motion. We accept them as read. Second. Uh, Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion passes 3-0. Next agenda is the uh, zoning board appointment. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are requesting this evening that Daniel Petrelli of 3 Jamison Court be appointed uh, to the zoning board as an associate member. Uh, Mr. Petrelli was involved with the uh, recent uh, soccer field complex uh, and he was recruited by John Kucher, the building commissioner. John uh, felt like uh, Mr. Petrelli was well spoken and did, did research, uh, got to know the town zoning by uh, uh, getting, uh, getting involved. So uh, John feels very confident and uh, would like to uh, appoint him as an associate member to the zoning board. Mr. You? Yeah. Mr. Petrelli, come on up. Hi, thanks. Come forward and tell us who you are, please. Sure. Um, like I said, my name is Dan Petrelli. I live at 3 Jameson Court. Uh, my wife and I moved to Sutton in 2012. I'm an English teacher. I work for UMass Boston. I teach on a satellite campus in Marlboro, teaching international undergrads mostly. And um, I really took an interest in zoning this past spring when uh, an indoor soccer facility was proposed on a piece of land abutting mine. Um, the land itself was mostly residential, and the town ended up putting, uh, sorry, the neighborhood ended up putting together an opposition to that, and we really grounded that opposition in a study of the bylaws, um, and I ended up being sort of one of the lead figures, uh, then I gave a presentation both nights in front of the zoning board, and after that, Mr. Kucher approached me about considering to be a ZBA member, so I mean, I came to have a lot of respect for the process, and respect for the, the tough decision the ZBA had to make, and I think the ethical way they did so, and um, I know a lot about that one topic, but uh, I'm ready to learn the rest too. So, okay. Dave, thank you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I watched your performance, and uh, <laughs> it, was, um, it was evident that you've done a lot of homework. So, yeah. you know, we certainly, uh, in any case, appreciate that that, that you would do that. Um, you know, obviously, uh, uh, to pursue this on a ongoing basis the uh, the issues that come up won't have the kind of personal connection that yeah. uh, that this particular one had for you so um, right. but uh, I think the background's great uh, you know as we always say here we uh, appreciate everybody that wants to uh, lend a hand and get involved so right. um, welcome aboard thank oh, you thank you well Dan thank you thanks I was here I saw your operation <laughs> you speak very fluently very well Thank you. Uh, if Kucha says you're good, you got to be good. Yeah. All right. And just thanks for the interest and thanks for helping out with the town. Oh. Thank you. It's kind of redundant, Dan, but uh, <laughs> um, I was involved with the uh, opposition phase. Right. And, and thank you. I was here for, 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 for public safety. Yeah. And uh, it was quite evident that uh, the committee that you had in the interest of so many residents yeah. To come up with um, professional reasoning yeah. and understanding and the way you went about things and the control that you had um, it was just evident that uh, your whole side was certainly well informed well groomed and uh, you made a lot of sense ah. so you coming to this board now um, with the recommendation of John Kucha um, we feel quite confident with John John's done amazing yeah. things for this town, yeah. and a lot of times he just 
picks it up and uh, goes off with it and the things that he can do is replacing windows and uh, <laughs> anything else and uh, um, our administrator yeah. goes to John quite a bit for the two of them with their advice and everything. Right. But uh, we really look forward. We need volunteers. We need right. good volunteers. And uh, for you to be a, a associate member on this board, uh, we welcome you. And right. uh, I think you're going to enjoy your stay here. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. I look forward to it. With all that said, we have a motion on the floor. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Daniel Petrelli to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an associate member. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks. Next agenda item is the Dudley Gendron change of manager slash liquor license. Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Dudley, Dudley Gendron uh, post 414 came in and asked to change the manager uh, to uh, Dave, David Carasius. Uh, from Merrill Atkins. Merrill Atkins is the current uh, manager and they would like to change it to David Carasius. Um, Dave, would you like to come up please and tell us a little bit about yourself and your role? <laughs> and um, well, yeah. I, I mean I grew up in town. Uh, I actually started, uh, my father was commander at the Dudley Gendron in 1961. My, my father landed in Normandy and fought through France and Germany and um, um, I was 11 years old and so I was probably running around there when I was seven eight and I hung out with a some wonderful band of brothers it was all World War two vets so I really learned patriotism and um, it this it's a it's kind of a hot felt job it's it's not a job it's a kind of a dedication for me so um, um, I, I retired from what I was doing and now this opportunity came up and so I'd like to pursue it and uh, we've done well over the last couple of years since I've been I was act, acting manager and uh, we, we're doing well mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Dave so Dave of course you're well known around there uh, <laughs> you've been involved for a long time so I think that uh, you know speaking for myself with there's a sort of comfort level having you come before us and mm -hmm. understanding uh, as, as I'm sure mr. Maynard will talk about some of the rules that are involved with uh, mm -hmm. operating a bar so uh, you know can you just give us a little bit about why the need or the, or the desire for a change uh, um, well Merrill's not interested any longer no, what okay. happened we, we lost our uh, by minute prior by by manager yeah. and so Merrill was the commander, so he took it on, and became a. It was it was a temporary thing for him. Okay. Um, for me, it's not. It's something that I, I and that I'm uh, probably my last job <laughs> at my age. But at any rate, yeah. So that's that was the reason. So he hey. just is not interested any longer. Okay. And there were some paperwork issues with the state. Are those kind of cleared up or, or about cleared up? Yeah, I mean everything. Everything's pretty much. Great. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So as I said, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm you know, yeah. very comfortable with uh, having you around. So thank you. Thank you. Paul. Dave, thank you again. <laughs> keeping that post running. Yep. Uh, as I say to everybody, the tips training. Yeah. Is for everybody. Well, we have that. We have we have. And as long as it's maintained and yep. managed. Everything's great. Yep. And there will and are going to be inspections and, and checks Absolutely. by the police department. Yep. Other than that, keep up the good work. Yep. Dave, welcome. <laughs> um, you're like me. You're probably 65? I'm 66. 65, 66. Yeah. Lived in town all your life. All uh, my life. You on Boston Road, myself yeah. on Singletary. <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of stories. But oh, yeah. um, I will say... Um, I've uh, been involved a little bit with the Sons of the American Legion and see what type of an organization sure. is down there. And within the last uh, year or so, you can just tell by the uh, amount of people that are in the parking lot, mm -hmm. the events that are there um, during the day and during the night, now with the tent set up and your yard sales and, and things like that, um, everything is very positive. Yeah. And uh, there's, it's, it's a community function. It is, and, and we have uh, we have a 
few things that we want to uh, run by the uh, the board at some point um, we're, we're doing a fundraiser right now um, a as I don't know whether you know we were chartered in 1947 and so this next year we're going to be 70 years so we're going to be planning a lot of things we we started a fundraiser for um, um, thermal imaging for the fire department um, we're up to we need to get 10,000 we're up to a thousand now and I think the way things are going I think that will go very very easily um, the other thing I'd like to mention if I could um, is that I we talked about it before I'm not sure with this group but maybe you with the dedication of the World War II Memorial down it's uh, our rededication we're hoping to do that on um, September I'm, I'm sorry November 11th at 11 a.m. which is Veterans Day and we're hoping that a, a good amount of people will come out. So I just want to just plant that seed. Make sure you send uh, yeah. Yeah. Debbie, Debbie yeah. an invitation so that it'll be, yeah. uh, be in yeah. our packets right. and everything, you know? Yeah. I don't, can I? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Without speaking for the board, maybe you should uh, work your way back to an invitation to uh, speak before us and do a little advertising around that time. Yeah, so. sure. I, and I, and I, I have okay. another one that... I have another idea um, that it's kind of a personal one, but um, um, I seem to get the calls for if there's anything vet related. And um, recently, uh, Debbie called me about uh, there was a couple in town that was passing through and asked if there was a Korean War memorial. And I says, "Oh, I don't, no, I don't believe so." So I, I um, um, called and some folks and it says no it was only the world war ii and there's a lot of history in this town with veterans um going back to the revolutionary war and i don't know what the procedure would be but i'm very interested in putting together in getting the town involved the historical society the reenactors of uh, uh, revolutionary and uh, civil war and in my opinion i don't know how the logistics of it is in front of the school that grassy area to become a, a memorial uh, park th which would be more of an educational have wars featured but also bring in Sutton residents and I think even the school can get involved where the uh, history department could get kids to, to do research on Sutton residents I mean I can list a number of them Vietnam World War II but when in well even Revolutionary War I know a lot of people because I take care of the database for all that and um, um, I don't know how to go about that but I'm just throwing this idea out um, that I, I would like to kind of put something together like that uh, and have that grassy area as a memorial park to veterans so I know this is probably not the forum but I just wanted to there would be a lot of that that's a like a five-year project okay. so hey, uh, again Dave the uh, 10,000 you're going after for the thermal imager yes just a little bit of history I can remember back standing up down there in front of Sten Brody and you guys giving me a check yep 10,000 yep and that what gave us the police department's first rescue squad yep that started from there yeah so. we're back you're back <laughs> <laughs> we're Great back with you. a vengeance and uh we want to we want to uh continue that uh that momentum so excellent so, yeah. without uh and i uh i agree with everything that's pretty much been said and we're glad to have you as uh, you. uh being in the new uh yep. person at the legion and uh Without much more said, uh, we have a motion on the floor. Mr. Chairman, on agenda number three, motion to approve the change of manager on the Dudley Jimden Post 414 liquor license to David Carasius. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. Fourth agenda is the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission reappointments. Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an annual uh, uh, motion, motion before the board. Uh, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission looks for uh, volunteers. Uh, John Hebert uh, is 
our the board's uh, selection as a volunteer uh, and he currently serves uh, what the southeast region or sub southeast subregion subregion uh, and uh, Bruce Davis serves as the alternate uh, to the board uh, we talked to Bruce he, he goes away quite a bit during the year good for him uh, but Bruce is willing to continue to serve if, if uh, the board would like him to do that and and I'm assuming uh, Selectman Hebert would also continue serving uh, the Board of Selectmen. Dave? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is one of those things where, uh, you know, we get to recognize uh, one of those sort of behind the scene things that, uh, that, that are really important to, uh, to the region and to the town and, and uh, both John and Bruce Davis have spent a lot of time uh, working in these committees and they do great work I've uh, I've had opportunities to be at other events where members of uh, uh, the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission have have spoken off the record to me about uh, um, sorry to say this in front of you but all the good work that you <laughs> that you do there um, and so it's um, you know I've spoken to Bruce about this and Bruce is really excited about this kind of work uh, and about and about this uh, particular appointment so um, without belaboring it I think uh, it's a, it's a welcome thing to have you both back it's it's uh, you know one of those things you've said it to me before where um, it, you know you don't just sit and absorb and do stuff yet you, you have to do it for a long time to really understand all of the uh, intricacies of the things that go on there and and have some history with it so this value in having having you continue to uh, to to fill this role on an ongoing basis so very happy to endorse this thank you Paul yes mr. thank you mr. chairman I, I can note what John goes through and Bruce goes through as where I said on the interrupt committee it's great to have a town person that wants to do this and John wants to do it and he's been doing it as, as long as as well as Bruce and I'm all for it keep up the good work John thank you um, not supposed to boast about yourself, but I think I'm in my seventh year or so on this. In the first year or so, it was certainly a learning curve where you had to uh, appreciate all the different players. You got the head ones from Boston, uh, District 3, Central Mass Regional Planning people, and uh, all these subcommittees and people, they all get together uh, generally once a month after public hearings and everything. And uh, we uh, vote on what monies for infrastructure, the bridges and roadways and everything throughout uh, uh, Central Mass. And uh, I'm proud to say that Central Mass and Blackstone Valley, we are more than just a number. We are a very strong voice uh, throughout the Commonwealth for the projects that we have going on here. Um, you take, for instance, the 146 project, and uh, before what we have now, a flyover bridge, at this time, it goes up 8% every year. It was $51 million to build a flyover, and everyone thought that would be the way to go. Well, I certainly agree with all that, but no one could afford $51 million. So between Boston and the engineers in District 3, and all the work that uh, they put into this and uh, the, all the meetings and uh, out here uh, surveying and things, um, a lot of people said, gee, I don't think this is gonna work. I don't, I don't know how you're gonna uh, be able to uh, congregate all this traffic into so many lanes. But you look at it now with five lanes going one way, cutting off one of the lanes going up to Sutton Center, um, day and night, uh, five to seven at night or seven to nine in the morning, the traffic flows through there. And uh, it's kind of rewarding to get calls from people that say, gee, we never thought it was gonna work. And uh, this thing does work with everything that's there. Um, so I am interested, and uh, I would like to continue to serve on this on this committee. I think it's important, and uh, that's just one of the projects. Many more throughout the district. We just finished that uh, 
Central Turnpike Sutton Road from it was a seven mile stretch of about ten million dollars in Northbridge but that ties in Sutton uh, down through Northbridge and uh, we got more going on here we're going to be looking at uh, Singing Falls uh, that's all free money that's going to be coming in to do that bridge the bridge in Manchog I can recall if, if I may at one time uh, the bridge over Mumford Road on Main Street um, it needed repair and it was repaired but they wanted to put a detour up and detour our traffic and I said you can't do that to that small district um, we got the, the little convenience store on one side with the gas stations and the fire department on the other side and people have to flow through there freely so what we did is did one lane at a time and it seemed to make sense and it supported all the people for local traffic and and for public safety it seemed to work the best way so these are t some of the things that uh, this committee does and we try to all get together and make some good sense of everything so without further ado I would like to uh, be a reappointed to this position and we do have a motion on the floor you can do that hey, mr. chairman uh, agenda number four, motion to reappoint Sockman John Hebert as the town's delegate to the Central Mass Regional Planning for FY17. Second. On the, the Art B, motion to reappoint Bruce Davis as alternate delegate to the Central Mass Regional Planning for FY17. Second that. Uh, we have two motions in front of us. Uh, Call for the vote. Aye. One at a time. Yeah, one at a time. First one. First one, aye. 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 Um, motion passes 3 0. Um, the second one? Aye. 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 And the second one pa passes for 3 0. Uh, first one was for Slockman John Hebert as a town's delegate. And the second one is to for Bruce Davis as the alternate delegate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you your service thank you and the next uh, agenda item is the IMA sewer agreement Jim thank you mr. chairman um, I want to present the intermunicipal agreement uh, with the town of Northbridge Sutton and Walmart uh, this has been something we've been working on for the past uh, better part of a year year and a half um, Walmart uh, had some issues uh, in Northbridge and uh, the Northbridge Board of Health uh, asked that they make um, uh, consider making some changes to their uh, current septic system underneath their parking lot uh, they currently pump out a couple times uh, 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 well a few times a week um, and uh, their septic system either needs to be redesigned and redone or they need to connect to a sewer uh, processor. Uh, Sutton has the closest sewer plant and we also have the capacity to handle uh, the sewer that uh, Walmart would be pumping. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the Graves Engineering did a uh, preliminary study well before uh, this, this Walmart and the sewer issue came up and it was part of the four town group initially and the whole idea was uh, providing sewer uh, to Northbridge down Main Street Northbridge for regional economic development uh, not thinking about Walmart at the time just planning long term Jen Hager uh, was was very much involved with this process uh, now that Walmart uh, has an issue um, we've got some plans and thoughts out there already uh, the town retained Graves Engineering to uh, review the design that Walmart is proposing um, the the Walmart intends to have a pump station behind the uh, entrance sign into Walmart um, that pump station uh, then leads to a sewer that flows down Main Street and uh, comes into a manhole at the end of Gilmore Drive and then it's pumped up to uh, Huff Road the sewer treatment plant uh, it's prob uh, probably well over a million dollars worth of work that Walmart is proposing. Um, the nice part is uh, we get a system that allows other people to tie into. Um, 
There are three priority development sites, PDSs, along the route of Main Street and Northbridge. All of those sites uh, would then have sewer, and that would help economic development. Water is also provided uh, to that area. And, and one side will be stubbed out on LaSalle Road. So potential future economic de uh, development down LaSalle and Oakhurst and so forth. So it's an exciting, uh, exciting time. Um, uh, Sutton has agreed to maintain the pump station. Uh, in lieu of that, Walmart has agreed to put $25,000 in a maintenance fund uh, for that pump station. Uh, and uh, the Sutton uh, Sewer Commissioners met last Wednesday and approved it. Uh, Northbridge uh, Board of Selectmen, who act as uh, sewer commissioners in the town of Northbridge, also approved it at last night's uh, Selectmen's meeting in, in Northbridge. Um, so uh, it's ready to go. Uh, ultimately, after this, if, if the board uh, sees fit and signs it, uh, we will send a copy down to uh, Walmart. Um, when they sign it, they can begin to uh, finish the design and begin construction. Uh, probably six to eight months worth of work. Um, Walmart is a, a, uh, in the private sector and they're very aggressive and willing to move forward quickly. So, uh, you know, future development along the route, we allowed Walmart to install uh, probably more than a pump that more than the size of the pump that was required for Walmart to pump uh, to Huff Road. Um, but any additional developer that wants to develop beyond a residence or two, a house or two, a priority development site, the responsibility is on the developer to install an additional pump, upgrade the pump at the pump station. We didn't want to force Walmart to put uh, an oversized pump uh, if they're the only ones pumping uh, for a length of time. Uh, so that was part of the agreement. Any future development, developer or development would be required to analyze the pump and uh, potentially upgrade the pump from the, in the pumping station. Um, I will entertain any questions the board has. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is, a, of course, a fairly detailed, a very detailed agreement, a long agreement, um, obviously uh, reviewed by town council. It was drafted um, by them. You know, for, from a layman's perspective, my perspective reading it, it seems to be very well drafted, I thought. Um, there was just one question I'd like to ask, if I could, sure. uh, regarding user fees on page 10, if you want to reference that. And I just there's a section about user fees and a separate section about uh, uh, sewer service, and I couldn't tell if we were billing Northbridge for a minor user fee on top of uh, the, the the sewer service fees <coughs> that are ultimately billed to Walmart, or if that's really kind of the same thing there in section 21 is is the actual usage fee. Yeah, we're not we're not marking this up. Okay. in any way. Um, we're going to bill Northbridge for the cost of uh, sewer provided to Walmart. Uh, Northbridge will then uh, charge Walmart and you know ultimately it's a three-party system. Um, the original in, uh, idea was to just uh, bill Walmart directly but Town Council uh, uh, rejected that because we can't lien any property in another town. Uh, if you know, I, I think Walmart's good for the sewer bills, but if uh, somebody takes over from Walmart and then all of a sudden stops paying the sewer bill, then uh, we have no recourse other than to, to shut off sewer. Um, we can't lien the property. Only Northbridge can lien that property. So that's why it's a three-party system, but there's no markup in this. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to mention that particular item that you just did. I thought that was a... Uh a well-designed uh, element of this agreement. Uh, in fact, if I read it right, uh, it sort of compels Northbridge to do that on our behalf, ultimately, if it were ever to uh, come to a circumstance that required that. So, right. you know, really, that's all I have is, is comments at this point. I think uh, the, the benefit to the town of Sutton is certainly the usage of the sewer plant. There's lots of capacity there. Uh, it really needs the flow. So this, this adds to the flow. It's a good thing to have for for the sewer system. Uh, there are, as you mentioned, opportunities for growth within that little corridor that's there. Mm -hmm. um, and just to remind everybody, if you haven't heard this from us before, but Walmart's essentially paying for the entire cost of construction of the project. So this really is a, 
nothing but a win for the town of Sutton. Um, all of the construction that's going on is taking place in the town of Northbridge, and yet the sewer system, the, the, the sewer department has kind of uh, oversight of the project and ultimately management of that pumping station. So exactly. it's a good thing. Thank well, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Jim, one question, and it might be just semantics here. On 21, is that $295? Yes. Okay, because I didn't I didn't see a period or anything after that. Yeah, we, yeah that's correct. Two hundred ninety five dollars based on thirty thousand gallons flow. Okay. And as Dave indicated, uh, it's it's odd to say, but the more the flow, the better the operation runs there at the plant on Huff Road. And in talk with Donald Bajowski, he thinks it's great, and it's the setting the pump stations up all the same that gives us all standardization of pots and pumps something breaks he has stuff in stock ready to go put it in so it's great that Sutton is going to manage that operation right good thank you yeah um, I agree with my colleagues and I know it's a well written document and it's taken a long time but uh, we're confident that between Walmart and the uh, communication that we have with the town of uh, Northbridge, uh, the two administrators, Jim and Mr. Kozik there in uh, Northbridge, uh, they get together quite a bit and uh, they've really hashed a lot of this out. So I'm confident that this is going to be a win-win-win for the town of Sutton. Yep. And we have a motion on the floor for this. Mr. Chairman, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, I move to approve the sewer IMA between the town of Sutton, the town of Northbridge, and Walmart. Second. The motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. And the last agenda item is a written procedures and disposition on surplus property. Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in closed, you'll find written procedures under Mass General Law Chapter 30, Section 15F, uh, that allows the town to, sp dis to dispose of any item under $10,000. Uh, I spoke to Tom McEnany and, and told him about our process, and he said, look, there are 351 cities and towns. There's probably <laughs> 300, uh, 340 that don't have written procedures, that they just uh, do it uh, what they think is right. Uh, and so Tom forwarded these written procedures. Um, you know, we're going to continue to so follow the same framework. I, I, I let the board know every time we go out to bid. Um, I have in front of you on the desk the, the two items that lo we're looking to sell. One is a, a 2005 Ford, Expl Ford Explorer, and the other is a 2006 Crown Vic, uh, which is the uh, police chief's uh, former vehicle. So. Um, you know, we're going to continue to use Municipid. We, we have great results from that site. Um, and, um, you know, we, we won't change our procedures. It, it will be advertised in the Millbury Sutton Chronicle as, as required by 30B. Uh, but I think it's better if we have formal written procedures uh, before the board, okay. before the town. Dave? No, just a, I guess just a thank you. I mean, I think. Uh, it's it's the right thing to do to have uh, written procedures so this is appropriate and um, documents what we have found to be a good way to, to sort of deal with these things so thanks very much well I agree with that an SOP or an SOG for any operation keeps it wise and smart and it's just good business thank you Jim and there's not much more to be said other than this follows a lot of the other things. Uh, we're ahead of the curve on a lot of the procedures and standards that we have. And, and it's good because it keeps everybody in check. And uh, it's easy if case something happens, we have, we have uh, something to fall back on. And uh, Somebody falls off a cliff, we've got a procedure to follow. <laughs> and we have a motion for this. Mr. Chairman, agenda number six, motion to approve the written processes for the disposal of surplus properties. Second. Uh, all, a motion is on the floor. And for a vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Next would be the town administrator's update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
I'll continue on with surplus property. It's, it's in my update. Uh, we will be advertising, I think we already have, uh, in the Millbury Sutton Chronicle this Thursday. Uh, we'll be coming out. You have a, have a copy of the ad in your, on your desk. Um, we'll be advertising for two uh, vehicles, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, there, there will be future vehicles that will become available, but then I will follow the procedures and let the board know when they come up, probably in the uh, uh, mid to late fall uh, season. But uh, right now we have uh, two items that we'll be going out to bid on. Uh, they will be on the uh, Municipid web website for 14 days. Um, and, uh, you know, we encourage everybody to, uh, to look at that and potentially bid. Uh, DPU approval, Department of Public Utilities. Uh, the Town of Sutton was formally approved by the Department of Public Utilities uh, for the uh, aggregation plan. Uh, this was the last major step uh, uh, in this process. Uh, we will now work with Peregrine Energy um, and, uh, and their company uh, and do a public outreach and probably go out to bid this fall for electricity supply. So it's, it's positive, it's moving forward, just as we had talked about last fall. Uh, it's, it's surprising that a whole year has gone by uh, talking about this, but uh, there is a process to go through and we have completed that process. So uh, we'll start uh, uh, the finalization on uh, going out to bid on that. Uh, cell tower, the process uh, continues to move forward in a very positive direction. I can have regular conversations with John Arthur from Wireless Edge. Um, they are uh, working with Verizon. Uh, they don't have a, a contract yet, but uh, they are extremely confident they will receive one. Um, John Arthur is actually working on the uh, site plan for uh, the cell tower. I, I believe the plan is uh, for Wireless Edge to, um, to do some of the uh, baseline construction of the tower. Uh, be, because of potential, although I don't believe they're uh, in reality existent uh, environmental issues. And it's really the, the fertilizers that the Whittiers use on their farm. Um, and the, uh, the Verizon in particular is, uh, would like that issue to be dealt with, so John Arthur is going <coughs> to move forward and, and build the base for the tower. Um, so we do have temporary, uh, a preliminary uh, design on that. Um, he has worked closely with Wayne Whittier on the uh, layout, uh, not only of the cell tower, but also the access road to the tower. The original plan was a 50-foot easement off of Town Farm Road, directly back to where the cell tower is located. Um, uh, the Whittiers would prefer that that not be the access uh, because it's a, a main cornfield uh, that they they plant every year so they prefer that it go uh, along the left hand side uh, adjacent to the barn and then a gravel path out to the back which exists right now that's that's the current access how do you get to the to the rear of this site um, so I think John Arthur has worked with uh, Wayne Whittier uh, they've agreed uh, ultimately uh, Wayne will sign an easement agreement to allow that uh, so it's all, all good news, and I'd expect that in a very short period of time that he will, uh, Wireless Edge will be before the zoning board and planning board to, to present plans. So that's good news. Uh, at some point, uh, they may look to the town for some sort of extension, uh, but uh, I told uh, John Arthur that, you know, I will present it as long as it's formally before the zoning board. So as long as it's under consideration in the zoning board and we know that it's happening, then I will, I will potentially present to the Board of Selectmen for a short-term extension on the due diligence period. Um, that's, uh, that's it. The goals meeting, as you all know, is next Wednesday night at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Okay. Thank you, Jim. That's all I have. Dave? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, a good news update. Thank you for the update, Jim. Sure. Um, I'm really excited uh, with the uh, the energy uh, item that uh, you know this is the, you know in some ways you said it, it's hard to believe it's uh, been a year I, it, from what we were led to believe in the early stages I think this has actually moved along at a pretty good pace I would agree and uh, I'm, I'm excited to be able to get out to the town with uh, 
with some competitive uh, options. So that, that's a really good story. Um, you know, if there's one issue in town that I probably hear more about from residents than any other, it's cell coverage. Um, so it's really uh, pleasing to see that there's uh, continued progress on this. I think, um, you know, we had a sense that this was going to happen a little while back and to, and to have it uh, continue to progress and have all the parties that uh, have, have sort of a stake in all of this uh, be talking and working out issues and moving it forward is good. But um, you know, is is there? I hate to ask this because I know the answer already, maybe. But uh, is there some kind of time frame we could tell people that um, they might be? You know, is it is it like a spring thing or? I, you know, I'm reluctant to give a time frame. I mean, Don't blame it. I, uh, I, <laughs> you know, I started working on this, uh, boy, seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, when I when we first went to town meeting, asking the for the twenty four thousand dollar acquisition price for the six acres of land and. And you know, and, you know, and every year I've had to, uh, you know, bite my tongue and, yeah. and just be patient. Uh, and and I thank the board for their patience as well because a couple of times, you know, it, it got kind of close to saying, let's go out to bid again, let's yeah. find a new new developer. But the reality was the the cell tower industry was was sort of dormant during the recession, and ultimately no one, no one was building cell towers. Uh, from 2009, 10 to 2015. So um, now that it's starting to pick up, uh, Verizon is interested. I, I do feel confident that we will get a cell tower. Uh, I'm hoping within the next year it goes up and, and we're done. Um, I'm not saying we'll start receiving money at, at that point. Uh, obviously, um, we will, if the board decides to extend the due diligence period, then we will receive it within one year of that extension, but, or whatever period of time the board agrees to. But I think we're coming down the final stretch. So what you're saying to me is uh, continued patience is the order of the day, but at least be uh, happy that um, we're seeing the progress. So thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paul. All right. Thank you. Jim, great update is for normal. Uh, for everybody out on the TV land, could you give a, a one minute on what Municipid is and what it does for us? Yeah. Municipid is essentially uh, an online auction, uh, similar to eBay uh, or other online, uh, not quite like Craigslist, but um, essentially, you know, we put in a, a minimum price for, for an object, a vehicle, let's say. Uh, I believe the minimum price for these two vehicles is starts at $500. Uh, if you know one person puts in a bid for $500 and no one else submits a bid, then $500 wins it, and then I issue a notice of award, and they uh, come in and I sign a contract and they pick up the the item. Um, what typically happens is a number of people are interested in it. Uh, they do a great job, this Municipid site does a great job at advertising and get a getting a lot of interest. Uh, and what we see is a lot of different uh, individuals bid on these items uh, across a wide range. Uh, I think we've received bids uh, uh, probably from, you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. Uh, so there's a wide... Uh, uh, viewership of this website uh, and ultimately it you know people get interested and they start bidding on it and the price just rises and what happens is during the last uh, what is it 10 minutes or so if somebody submits a bid a final bid trying like on eBay to put in a last minute bid they extend it by an additional two minutes so what you see often is what happens is people put, put you know at, at three minutes left they put a, a big bid in and then the bid continues for another two minutes. So it gives people an opportunity to, to continue to bid until finally uh, the, this, the final price is settled. So it's, it's definitely worked for the town. I, I believe we've received uh, the uh, cost of the vehicles that we've uh, surplused uh, much greater than we received uh, advertising in local newspapers. You know, from a, from a local uh, interest level uh, from the Worcester Telegram, Milbury Sutton Chronicle, uh, to now uh, s semi semi national uh, viewership. 
we see we see we receive a lot more interest and bids as a result of that. You know, in the previous years we bid fire trucks and we'd get three hundred dollars for them, uh, and now we are uh, you know receiving much more interest and and price action on those. So the bottom line, another job well done, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting, Jim, on the. Uh, on these bids now, invitation for bids, especially for the Crown Victoria, that's a uh, hot item because they don't make that car anymore. Right. And uh, a lot the of these... Interceptor engine. Yeah, a lot of these cars, uh, they get turned over to taxi cabs, and it depends on the mileage and it depends on the year. But a lot of things now that they're doing is some of the bigger companies are buying these and they're shipping out, out to the third, third world countries and uh, they have no uh, real standards of what they can accept over there, but everyone likes the Crown Victoria. Yeah, so, whoever gets the know. Chief's former car it's is going to be very impressed. It's, it's an, it uh, was well yeah, taken care of, you know. Uh, one owner, uh, babied. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, vehicle, big time. So. Yeah. John might be bidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had my, I had my fill of those, you know, <laughs> honestly. Okay, uh, thank you for, for the update sure. on everything. And now announcements. I'm doing everything. And we'll do the announcements and then we'll do the Suckman's round table and correspondence after. I'm all set then, thank you. Oh? Uh, we have another letter in here too, Jim, don't we? From uh, Senator Fatman. Uh, yes. Just to acknowledge, really. Just acknowledge letter and uh, just for our packet. I'm good, thank you. And now, uh, Selectman's Roundtable and Correspondence. I just have one sort of lighthearted thing. Uh, a little shout out to the police department. We had, uh, we had a couple of escaped cows from uh, my neighbor's uh, uh, farm the other day, and uh, it made for an interesting morning around the Hartness Road neighborhood. And uh, so the police uh, were summoned to uh, to kind of do some traffic control and, and uh, a little bit of cow control, so it's kind of fun. Thank you. Paul? Nothing. I don't. Well. Correspondence. Oh, we, we combined just, them. Just acknowledge the correspondence. Oh, okay. We do have a uh, letter from uh, a former resident, now lives in Oxbridge, and uh, that's it for our correspondence. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion.